Hey, Damna, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, thank you. What about you? I'm fine, thank you. It's really nice to have you here as first guest for my new project. Very good. So, let's talk about uh, Helven King. Your last album was released uh, last April. What can you tell about, about its genesis and lyrics? Okay, so... So oh, yeah, uh, Rear of the Runes Rapture is, um, as we all might know by now, it, it's a, a concept album. Um, actually, it's the second part of this trilogy that we've been uh, working on since uh, the previous album, Rear of the Runes Divination. And, um, you know, the um, basically the, the lyrical... Uh, uh, genesis of this album is uh, was uh, started back in 2019 because of course we we started this concept trilogy with the, with the previous chapter and so we um, already um, you know kind of uh, lined down all the 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 things that uh, happen also in this in this chapter and also in the in the next one of course um but the real genesis of this album uh started in in 2020 basically when the the pandemic began because we uh you know uh, in january of 2020 we made a tour with brothers of metal and and that was the what was supposed to be the first tour of supporting the divination album and then uh, we were supposed to uh, have another another tour in in I think it was March 2020. It was a headlining tour, a European tour, but of course it got cancelled. So uh, you know the 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 bad period about the pandemic started, and we all know uh, you know how it was. And um, basically, even if we uh, went on working because we all work and but anyway uh, there were no uh commitments uh, with the band there were no tours no gigs no shows nothing so basically we uh we focused on the songwriting and that's where we started writing the new songs for this album and also for the next one um we went as far as uh writing all the songs of both albums writing and recording all the demos of both albums and and then eventually recording also um you know we recorded all this rapture album and we recorded also already part of the of the following one so basically we made a lot of work since we had a lot of time yeah um of course it it uh, you know this gave us the chance to actually um you know distribute the songs um at best i think because uh you know being concept albums uh, there's a lot that goes with the with the atmosphere of the songs and uh, uh and you know finding the right mood for the right song and finding also the right lyrics for the right song because of course we already knew what were the um, the ha happenings of the story you know we, it was all clear in our heads but uh we needed to you know write all the lyrics down and um and have the right song you know that could go with the right with the right lyrics so it was a bit of a work there but uh, uh having all all the the time in the world uh yeah it gave us a chance to actually distribute all the songs in in, in the right spot in the right place so um yeah as 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 bad as it was uh that was a positive thing for us yeah for many bands actually the pandemic uh, was uh, a different kind of time to concentrate more on the music and write in a different way usually it's more uh, hurry up we have to do this in that time that time but during the pandemic was quite different Yes, yes, it was, it was, uh, but it was, uh, I don't know, it, 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 it's a kind of, it, it was strange because as I said, we kept on working basically our lives 
didn't change that much during the pandemic but still uh yeah there was a different especially with the music with the uh with also the release of albums and songs it was really different because all that world really shut down really stopped so we had uh yeah the, all the time to focus on the important things and and i see this uh, these days that we have a lot of things going on like a lot of um live like shows proposals you know can you play here can you play there and then you have to do the new album and then you have you know all the scheduling is starting to get back to normal or it's yeah. even more hectic and and now i really find you know find out that it's too much i mean it's you know calm down we, we have all the time to do all the things and 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 we might have the chance to do them in you know in a better way you know because it's planned it's more you know thought and uh, yeah yeah also the um actually no i want to ask before because uh, for the third part there is the release date you are releasing the next album next year in august right yeah the next part is supposed to be yeah, yeah. It, it is supposed to be released in August. Uh, it, of course, everything has to go according to the plans. You know, for now, everything is going as planned. Uh, so yeah, if there are not any changes or you know incidents of any sort, yeah, uh, next year we'll have an, uh, another yeah. album. Yeah. Nice. I'm really happy because listening to your music is always amazing. So. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Into to your music. I don't know how many years, but yeah, it was early 2000, so yeah, it's cool. <laughs> years or more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well. Time go fast. <laughs> exactly, yeah, it's, yeah. We've been, you know, we started in, uh, well, the band started in 97, as you know, and I, I, I entered the band in 98, so yeah, it's a few years we've been doing this. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, for the art cover of uh, those, this trilogy, uh, yeah. you use the same uh, artist, uh, Sofia Dankova. Mm -hmm. Right, pronouncing the name right, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I was. I, I mean, yeah. yeah. It's, it's supposed to be uh, spelled that way. <laughs> yeah, I was working with her, and uh, how di did you plan uh, the the work? Was like she had free hand or, or uh, do you put your ideas okay yeah, yeah well uh, working with with sofia is amazing i mean uh since the first time we, we worked together on the divination album um uh you know a, apart from the fact that she's a great artist that it's it's you know it's, it's pretty obvious and um uh, the cool thing about her is that um, you don't need to tell her too much uh, because she exactly, at least for these two covers that she's, you know, she, she made for us, she uh, exactly understood the, the mood and the atmosphere that um, the, the cover artwork had, had to embrace. Uh, so you know we just gave her uh, the basic uh, information about the album and the concept and the story and she just you know drew like uh very um simple sketches like five or six if i'm not um, mistaken very very simple and you know all, all of those sketches were great but we just have to choose one and and then from there she 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 made the, the real cover and uh, yeah it, it it was great because she as i said she understood uh, exactly what we needed we didn't we didn't have to usually we are very um i would say also boring um when we are um asking for an artwork we always really um you know we have a clear idea in our minds so we tend to be um, a little bit um, 
you know, asking many things to the artist. And sometimes we, we, we kind of get, as I said, boring because we're kind of like, can you do this? Can you do that? Uh, we thought this would be like that. Instead, it's not like that. And we go on like notes and notes and notes. Uh, but, you know, the cool thing about Sophia is that, uh, you know, we, we left, her, you know, total freedom because uh, there was a total understanding between us. Yeah. So that was awesome. It was the connection. Totally, totally. Yeah. How did you get in touch with her for those artworks? Well, we saw her previous works with, that she made for Powerwolf. Yeah. So we just contacted her and, yeah. And she was up to. to yeah, watch. totally, yeah. She, she, actually, she was a fan of Alvin King. She oh, nice. So, yeah, that was a plus, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. So, talking about fans for many of your fans the album that uh, represent totally helven king is uh, the pagan manifesto uh, what do you think about it is the album that if no, let's take a person that know nothing about helven king uh, do you think that the pagan manifesto is the album that this person should listen as first yeah I, I you know for many years i've been having this idea and probably i still have um uh you know something happened when we when we started writing the songs for the pagan manifesto because you know um we said this many times before but it's um never enough i mean uh with the the scythe album the red silent tides and, and also era we kind of um you know wondered a little bit um probably even too much uh, we explored different things with the scythe we made a uh, like a more you know like a heavier album and then with the red silent tides we made a basically a hard rock album with and with era we uh you know, kind of try to get back on track, but still, um, I think we didn't uh, we didn't end our will and need to explore or um, and to focus more on the songwriting itself than uh, uh, writing songs that are one hundred percent Elven King style wise. You know, it was more like you know. Uh, experimenting with the songwriting um but i think that you know this unfortunately you know uh, slowed us down a little bit because we didn't focus completely on the elven king idea and the elven king essence but it was more like uh you know our own will to write a certain kind of song here and there and um but with the bigger manifesto me and aiden you know who are the main songwriters have always been. Uh, we just sat down and said, okay, uh, we made this and that, and we tried this and we tried that, but what are we going to do now after the, the, the Air album? And uh, we talked a lot about this, about the, you know, the direction that the, the, the band uh, should take or shouldn't take on, on the following album. And... Uh, it was like a, a pact signed in blood, and we really talked to each other really um, honestly and said, "Okay, Elvin King is what does Elvin King stand for? You know, what yeah. what does this band stand for?" And 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 we kind of made a list of all the the features of of the band, of what was the band at the very beginning, what was our goal at the very beginning, and we tried to you know, start back from, from that point, because that's the point where we started as musicians, we started as Elven King and, and that's the real reason and the real essence of us, uh, in Elven King, all the things that we made, uh, after that, it was like a detour, but it, 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 it was not the essence of Elven King and of us as Elven King band members. Mm -hmm. So that's 
this was the environment where the Vega Manifesto was was born. We 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 also discovered some old ideas that we had that we never used. Also coming from the very early days, we had these cassettes where we you know used to play ideas and we never used them, but we picked them up for the Vega Manifesto. So it, it's it's a special album for all these reasons, and I yeah. think that the result is really um, honestly one of the best things we've ever made and probably i don't know if it, it will be one of the best things that we will ever do i don't know i don't know this is uh, we will see at the end of the journey the journey is not uh, ended yet but um yes of course this is uh if you want to know elvin king you should start from from that one i i still believe that um yeah 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 you mentioned that the two albums that were like different that you experiment like red silent tides and uh, the shite so how what, what do you remember about those albums about the for example the reaction from the fans because they were quite different from what you did before so probably some fans were were disappointed or then got new fans. Um, what do you remember about? Well, uh, first of all, I think, you know, what I remember of those, uh, you know, of the, the, the years of the, the exact times when we recorded and wrote those albums were, as usual, times of uh, big passion, you know, because, of course, we made different things, we've explored, but we've always had a strong passion. So when we wrote The Scythe, for example, we were totally into what we were writing. It, 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 there was um, no question for us if it was wrong, if the direction we were going to was wrong. No, there was you know, no question. That was great, and we had... A great fun and a great time writing and rehearsing and then recording those songs. Um, the same went for, for the Red Silent Tides. I mean, uh, we were totally hyped about working with Dennis Ward as, as a producer. So it's, uh, you know, it, it, there were as usual great times. But um, yeah, talking about reaction from fans, especially with the Scythe, it was a disaster. It was a total disaster. Um, uh, you know, it's, Usually it's like that when you have a, a fan base, a strong fa fan base, especially after an album like The Winter Wake is like one of the most successful albums we've ever made in terms also of, of, of sales. We never consider sales, but it was, you know, just to make you understand that that was one of the albums that was mostly recognized when it was released by fans, by, 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 by metal fans in, in general. So, you know, we went from a very successful album and what what did we do? We changed completely. I wouldn't say completely, but we changed a lot. And of course, we had a lot of, of disappointed fans and we had a lot of bad reviews. There are still some online. You can check them out if you search a little. They are disastrous. And... Uh, um, then with time, you know, with, with, with the years, a lot of, of, of Elven King fans, you know, wrote to us and said, you know, when the site was released, I hated it. Uh, I really hated it. But, but now I, you know, I rediscovered it, rediscovered it. I, now I like it. I understood what you were, you know, trying to do, blah, blah. So uh, probably those are albums that, um, you know, maybe they stand the test of time because you give them time to breathe and then after some years you listen to them again and then you say well after all it's not a bad album uh it, they are not bad albums per se but of course they were different as you said and that created uh confusion disappointment and of course yeah but yeah the, the reaction at the time was not that that great yeah <laughs> especially from a you know, hardcore fans. Yeah, I remember that uh, about the uh, shite. I, I, that at that time I was buying, maybe it was Metal 
Hammer or what other I don't remember all the metal maniacs or, or whatever. I was yeah. reading quite a lot, uh, so I was checking what what's new and what I'm going to buy next. And uh, actually, I I looked a review of uh, of the album and I went to buy the album and then I was happy with the album. Yeah, it was, it was different, but I yeah. also like different kind of music. So for me, maybe. Is not that big of a shock. Uh, sure. I must say that Red Silent Tides, it was a more surprising because it was totally different. <laughs> it was a, re- a really a different thing, but I enjoyed it and I still listen to the song. So, <laughs> but I, yeah, you know, I mean, that, that, that was the, 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 the thing there. It's, um, you know, those albums were like that because. Of course, we we come from uh, such a wide uh, plethora of different things and in music that for us was not a big deal. Yeah. But you know, with the years, we we understood that, and in our hearts, we knew you know that most of our f- fans wouldn't maybe understand because, of course. When you like something and and you're really into that kind of band and that kind of music, when that band you know makes an album that's totally different style wise, of course it 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 can create a little bit of uh, you know confusion or detachment, you know, because of course uh, what what you were loving so much suddenly has changed. So um, I can understand that. And and especially in the, in the metal world, you know, uh, sometimes it really gets, uh, uh, how can you say that? Um, uh, metal fans sometimes are really, uh, I wouldn't say they are not open-minded, but they kind of sometimes uh, tend to be a little narrow when it comes to, to you know their 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 li- their likings. I mean, it's but it's it's okay. I mean, we it's it's not it's not a big deal. But of course, at one point, we just thought that we we had to define our sound and not like uh, you know what should we play today? Mm, uh, very melodic song. What should we play today? Oh, a very a very heavy song today. It, it's not it's not how you build your own own uh identity as a band yeah. unless yeah. you are a total a totally experimental band and that's fine but you, you you couldn't define elven king as an experimental band so we really needed to define our identity yeah but i think that most bands have that time that they are going to experiment and try something different and there there are always people that uh, that are not into the new things or uh, sure, sure. But it's really important for an artist to get to experiment to try new things and see what happened exactly exactly yeah so talking about touring uh, you have been now touring quite a lot you were also for the first time in finland and i was unable to come to see you okay. and I'm so mad because i saw you one or two times i don't remember but i was waiting so much to see you in finland and i wasn't able to come and i hope to come in the future again yeah yeah we 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 are working on that so yeah i i suppose you you know will be will be coming to finland more than in the past So basically right. never because this was the first time so yeah, yeah. so how was it Numia Rock? It was amazing, amazing. Great great feeling, great festival, yeah. yeah. But you know, we've we've been to Finland before. I don't know why we never played live. That's uh really you know, we played pretty much everywhere, but we never played in Finland. I don't know why. Uh we've been there recording albums, mixing albums, but uh yeah, fortunately finally we we were this year but yeah it, it more will follow yeah 
So I have to wait to see you here yeah, again. Sure. I have to sure. come somewhere else. Sure. Because the, the only time I saw you, I don't remember if it was once or two, but it was in Pordenone at least. Okay. <laughs> that Silent Tides uh, release party. Okay. So I was there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I need more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need more Finland. <laughs> yeah, but so far, uh, what is the best gig or festival that you play in your career? It's a it's a hard question because you have a lot yeah. on your back. But yeah, it's really hard to tell. Um, well, of course, the Wacken Festival is uh, among the the best. Yeah, it's, it's pretty easy. Um, uh, then also the Masters of Rock in the Czech Republic. That's always amazing. We played there a couple of times, I think, and it's always amazing. It's like uh, yeah. you get on stage and you have like really the wow feeling because you have all these people in front of you. It's it's amazing. Yeah. But you know, it's you know we've we've, we've been doing a lot, a lot of, of great gigs. It's it's um, it's difficult to 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 choose. You know, we we had a really intense show. Uh, now that you make me think of it, when we played in two thousand and nineteen in Chile, we made like a, it. It was a, a South American tour, and uh, but. Uh, when we were in uh, in Santiago, uh, there were these big riots there. It was like everything was sh was was shut, and there was like million of people in the streets, like um, rioting, and it was uh, it, it was pretty dangerous. And but anyway, the promoter decided to make us play not in the evening because in the evening there was this. Um, we couldn't play in the evening. We played like in the early afternoon. And despite the riots, um, some fans, you know, just, uh, just, uh, they, they arrived, they, they, they got to, to, to be in the, at the venue. And, you know, probably it was because of this situation, you know, with all the police around and all these things going on, it was hard. Uh, the fans were, were so wild during our concert, that was probably one of the most intense shows uh, in, I mean, in, in Santiago in the early afternoon in front of, I don't know, I think a hundred people, you know, yeah. they, 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 yeah, they, they finally came to the, the, the venue, but, it, you know, it, it was like a, a miracle <laughs> that they were there and then, yeah, it was really intense, really cool. Yeah, it's a really different kind of situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable, actually, but yeah. 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 It was, yeah, cool. Yeah. Cool, in a way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, let's talk about your other band, Hell in the Club. You are going yeah. to release a, a new album next yeah. month. Uh, what can you tell about it? Yeah, next month. Yeah, I, I I forgot about that. It's already already yeah you know, yeah already in August. Yeah. Uh well. Uh, what can I tell you about the album? Um, you know, well in the club. If you know well in the club, uh, you know that um. Uh, you know, well in the club was born because of uh. The love that we have for this kind of music. I mean, we were raised as kids by this kind of music because it was like we were seven, eight years old and we started to to listen to bands like Europe, Kiss and Aerosmith and Motley Crue and Maiden Metallica. And, you know, those were the real uh, years of imprinting. So basically we, we, we learned everything from, from that you know, from that kind of music. And, and and it was pretty early when we decided that we would stick to that kind of music for the rest of our lives. 
And Hell in the Club is a little bit of, of a tribute to those years, to those bands, to those sounds. And um, so, yeah, the next album will be another album of, of pure love for that kind of music. Yeah. Uh, probably even more, I would say. Um, it's, it's really like a love letter to that kind of music, to those years. And uh, um, we kind of... Uh, we were really uh, instinctive when writing these songs. Uh, we, we didn't have any kind of uh, thought about uh, will people like this album? Will Is this song uh, long enough? Is this riff cool enough? We, 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 you know, usually those are things you, you, you think about when you write songs and prepare an album. But this time it was like... Uh, you know, no frills, no, no overthinking. Just yeah, it was a free road. Totally, yeah. yeah. So that's the cool thing about this album, I think. Then, of course, if you like that kind of music, you can give it a shot, and you might yeah. find find a couple of songs that are good enough. <laughs> I remember that I came to uh, see you in the uh, rock club. In Ronchi dei Legionari. Oh, okay, okay. At the time of the first uh, album. Yeah. And uh, yeah. there were not many people, and I was, I remember, I was mad why there are not many people uh, this Saturday. <laughs> so I was like, where the people are? And it yeah, was yeah, yeah. a great gig. I really enjoyed it. And yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, we, we just started at the, at the time, and uh, we were making like a million live shows everywhere, like trying to promote a little bit the band or, or just have fun basically yeah. because they, they, with this band we never thought too much about yeah. numbers or we just we are just friends who, who sometimes yeah. have fun on stage together that's yeah the, yeah. the biggest uh thought <laughs> around this band just you know so give it a go uh yeah enjoy yeah enjoy. Yeah, yeah that's the 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 main thing what about the lyrics on uh, on the on this new album that is coming next month uh well um the lyrics um talking about my lyrics because we we are two writing lyrics me and nandy the bass player and uh, talking about my lyrics uh usually you know it's already this probably the third album or second i don't remember where i you know since i'm i i'm a i, I read i I love to read, uh, you know, books and so on, and and I found out that it was cool to talk about the books I read during the year uh, with the lyrics of Elling the Club. So uh, yeah, this time there are at least um, three songs that uh, are inspired by books that I read this year. Uh, the first one is the first single has already been released. In, last month and it's Sidonie and it's about uh, Sheikh Rul, uh, a book um, by uh, Georges Simenon. Mm -hmm. um, then uh, there is um, Cimitero Vivente. I use the, the Italian name because I really love it, but yeah. uh, basically it's a uh, pet cemetery from Stephen King. Uh, but I really love the Italian name, so I left it. The song is in, in English, of course, but the title is uh, you know, and of course, there's another Pet Cemetery song by the Ramones. You already know, but uh, yeah, I love the Italian one. And then there is another one, uh, uh, "The Kid," which will be released as the third single. Uh, in in in, I think it will be released the same day of oh, that the album will be released, and that's about uh, Cormac McCarthy album, the yeah, album, yeah, yeah, book, uh, Blood Meridian, uh, uh, which is a really bloody western book uh, like philosophical and really deep so uh, yeah i wrote a song about that and then the other you know in the lyrics other things like you know the usual thing like feelings and things that we live and yeah it's, it's probably a little bit uh i wouldn't say darker because it's not you know, dark is not a a word that fits Ali in the club, but uh, maybe it's a little bit, uh, yeah, a little bit, um, a, a little bit less lighter 
let, let's say there are less lights, more shadows probably, but um, yeah, you, yeah. Will, you will see when it will be released. <laughs> a month and a few days and then I can listen to the, the whole album. Yeah. By the way, the, a new single will be released, uh, I, I don't remember the exact date, but in July, so in a matter of days, you'll have a new single out. Let's wait. Yeah. But now let's talk about uh, metal music in general. Uh, how did you get into metal music? You mentioned before the rock band that everyone yeah. is grown up with, but how did you got to know those bands? How was the first contact? Yeah. Let's say? Well, the, you know, I had, a, I, I had a, an older brother who used to listen to, to those kind of... Oh, 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 by the way, when he started listening to those bands, I started. Uh, but, it, it, you know, he was like... Uh, he was like 14 years old and I was seven. He was 15 and I was seven. And... Um, and, uh, you know, when he started, uh, at, at the time, we, you know, you had uh, on TV, there were uh, channels where they showed uh, uh, music videos, uh, you know. Uh, uh, there was also MTV, uh, who was, you know, being called music television, actually showed music videos, not like it does today, that it just shows crap. Uh, Did you uh, uh, Tele Monte Carlo 2? <laughs> Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, and before that, there was video music. I don't know if you know yeah. that. It was, yeah. So basically, at the time, uh, it, it was like 1987, 1988. So metal was uh, a bit more popular than it is today. So um, I remember, like it is, like it was yesterday. I remember videos from "Can I Play with Madness" by Maiden, one by Metallica, and uh, Ellie. Scooper, Ozzy Osbourne, and all those bands, and 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 my brother used to buy uh, like a set of, of those albums, and and so that was my first uh, you know meeting with 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 metal. Uh, definitely the first metal album that I got was Seven Son of a Seven Son by Maiden, and that was you know I I immediately understood that uh, that was the music of my life uh, immediately. Then it was Injustice for All by Metallica, Rust in Peace by Megadeth, and, and you know, it was, uh, what else? Yeah, then I rediscovered the discographies of those bands as soon as, you know, I, I could. So Maiden and Metallica were the first real, real you know, metal yeah. bands, and I, I started exploring all of the metal of, of the 80s and first 90s yeah. yeah then the rest is history as they yeah. say and what are you listening now there is any any band or any album in particular that you are listening at this moment let me see this is one of the albums i'm listening to so it's right. the first album by omen battle cry great album yeah. Then, let me see. I was listening to this. I was rediscovering this album by Bathory. Not one of the best ones, but it's good. And let me see. I was listening to this, the first album by Rotting Christ. Yeah. <laughs> but basically, yeah, I listen to music all day long. And, uh, um, albums and bands. Uh, um, I'm really into bands like, uh, for example, Tribulation. I really okay. love them. Or um, I like this this new wave of of um, like old school metal bands like Vulture or uh, Space Chaser, for example. All these bands that are like reviving, but genuinely heavy metal. Yeah, uh, I love yeah all the all that it's is basically um, respecting heavy metal. Uh, yeah. So yeah. But, yep. Right. A lot of different things. Different things so that you enjoy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just not new. Yeah. 
uh, what was the first metal or rock gig that you saw? Mm. Well, one of the very first, I don't know if, if it was the first, but maybe it was. It was Guns N' Roses in 1992. It was the Usual Illusion Tour. I was a kid, I was 11. But my parents uh, yeah, brought me and my brother to, it was Reggio Emilia at yeah. the stadium. And it was like uh, one of the last shows of the Usual Illusion World Tour. Yeah. Still remember that amazing, amazing, yeah. yeah. And for a eleven years old boy, it was like a dream, probably. Yeah, to it was. It was. Guns it was. back then, yeah. Yeah, there, I think there, that suicidal tendencies were was the uh, supporting band. Um, okay. Yeah, amazing, amazing, yeah. Okay. Great, great memories. And. Uh, what is the best gig that you saw? Hmm. That's another tough question. Um, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, there are many for many different reasons, but um, probably it, I'm going to say some Iron Maiden show. They are all amazing. So yeah. I, I've seen them. How many times like seven or eight times i don't know maybe more um it's always amazing to see them so i would say maiden uh, throughout the years yeah 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 that's always a great happening you know and uh in a in a week i'm gonna see them in milan so there's going to be another favorite show on the list i'm sure is iron maiden your favorite band yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, you know, it's always, I always say yeah, it's hard to tell which is my favorite band, but then in the end, yeah, there is. yeah, and if I look at my CD collection, there is no, no other answer. Basically, it's Maiden yeah. all the way. Yeah, yeah, it's one of the greatest band in the history, and they are still kicking hard on the stage yeah, <laughs> they yeah, are yeah. Singing. like it, it will be nice that whole band stay in this shape and play <laughs> <laughs> definitely definitely yeah yeah they one are, of a kind yeah, yeah. And, and not repeatable in history true there is no one like iron maiden no no not really? at all Okay, so let's take uh, random, let's pick some random them. I have this jar with uh, some pieces. Mm. Or let's see what we are going to talk now. Mm. Games. Are you a game gamer? Uh, yeah, yes, I am. Um, if you if talk about, uh, you're talking about video games, right? video games but uh, also if you are into table game or whatever well yeah, yeah basically both uh but um it's um i, I wouldn't say I, i'm a typical gamer because when it comes to table games i have like uh one favorite and i play only that one and and, uh, and it's hero quest okay in all its manifestations now with you know as you you may know that they have you know reprinted a new version and i'm buying all the expansions and i'm a fan of that but basically probably because i'm a a, a nostalgic uh guy and i everything that has the 80s feeling it's cool for me you know yeah. it's like reviving those years and so basically hero quest was released in the I think in Italy it was the, the early 90s, but it, it was a product of the 80s basically. And um, I bought that, and, you know, they, my, my, my parents, you know, uh, it was like a Christmas gift and I wanted it so badly. And then I played, I don't know how many hours with that table table game. And 
so yeah uh, i'm a table gamer but only only for hero quest and talking about video games yeah yeah um but basically i i am a lover of point and click adventures since the early 90s so that's my area in in gaming so um but sometimes i also you know kind of like some new games that come out like for example the witcher i really love that cyberpunk i really love that but uh, yeah basically my passion is on point and click adventures so there has to be a great story there has to be you know some brain killing um uh enigmas or yeah like uh riddles and stuff yeah. start to to work uh, exactly i yeah and uh and yeah the more complicated they are and the more happy i am that's yeah, yeah that's uh yeah. And usually the, the the first ones that were, the, that were released in the early 90s were really complicated and i love those like the the sierra games the lucas lucas arts games um you know let, let me show you an example here for example this this is one of my favorite yeah so the sun yeah. max and yeah. then, oh, for example this this is the very favorite of mine yeah so yeah this is my how many games do you own uh, <laughs> I have them in front of me. Uh, well I, I don't have a big collection but i have some yeah boxed versions original boxed versions that i used to buy when i was a kid and some i bought them some years ago like on ebay because i wanted to have them some king's quest some quest for glory broken sword uh under a killing moon i'm just looking at them yeah. shadow of the comet alone in the dark green fandango these are my favorite and yeah i have them here in front of me <laughs> <laughs> yeah. how many hours do you spend playing well, well uh, not in not a lot anymore um i, I kind of you know try to to choose like uh, a good game and, and spend some few hours on on a few games uh, i used to play more in the past but uh yeah i kind of uh try to find a good experience and you know really live that uh from start to finish and you know enjoy that deeply and then you know then there are so many things to do with the band that i don't have uh yeah. <laughs> much anymore, but yeah, yeah, that's true. What is the worst game, the game that you ever played? Like, no, this one is no, no. The worst <laughs> game, the worst. The, yeah, there, there have been some bad games, but um, I have to think a little bit about that. Um. Ah, uh, it's difficult. It's difficult because you know it's. If it was so bad, probably I don't remember about it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me think a bit, a bit more. Maybe I will come later with that. With that. Yeah. Yeah, with that, yeah. Yeah. It was that bad that is it impo impossible to remember? <laughs> probably. Yeah. I usually, you know, if it's bad, I just you know too many things in my head anyway, yeah. so I tend to you know keep the good ones <laughs> yeah let's pick the next oh another one another one and we got social media mm. so what is your opinion on social media i hate it <laughs> yeah yeah i hate the the way it turned people uh, uh people as become uh, unbearable to me uh, you know i already uh, you know i've always been uh, like a bit you know anti-social myself but the way people turn with this social media thing it's really uh, something i don't like yeah I'm because it's uh, uh it's turning everything to a level of uh, superficial you know 
that is un unbearable to me. You know, everything is is uh, all about uh, superficial things. It's it's all it's all, all everything is superficial, especially with the social media. And everything has to be good looking, uh, polished, uh, short. Uh, uh, like videos, short videos, because you know it's too much. You know you don't have the time to 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 you know read something or look at a longer video because you don't have time. You have to look at all the shit. You know, scroll and scroll and scroll. And and, uh, and when I hear people also in in the, in the music business that is talking about all these algorithms and all these strategies to make your pages uh, have more f followers and all this shit. Uh, you know, in, in a very first moment, I thought that uh, for the band, it would be useful. So I was kind of, um, I was interested in knowing more about it. But then I really got sick of all this shit, you know. It's like you have to do the photo this way, you have to write this and not that, and, and blah, blah, blah. blah and... A certain time you have to post so you get views. Yeah. Yeah, I also was a time that I tried to, and then I was... Forget it. I, I, I don't want. I don't want stress over social media. If people like, because I... Usually, what I post are uh, gigs, photos. Mm -hmm. If people likes, well, if they don't want, don't. Whatever, whatever. I, I'm I'm happy with uh, with uh, my photos, and uh, that's the the main point. And if the bands that I took sure. the photo of are happy and ask for the photos, then I'm even more happy. <laughs> but yeah, the social media is. Uh, at the beginning, it was. Uh, something uh, nice it was uh, like a good I idea but then it became something else of course it is it is a good idea when uh, um, you know if you look at the thing that you know it uh, you get in contact with uh, all the world you tend you can promote your things freely and uh, you know it's it's of course a great instrument uh, but uh, yeah, it's usually good ideas in the hand of humankind usually tend to become something twisted and, you know, distorted in a way. Yeah. In the meantime, I'm scrolling the the games I own so I, I can find the, the bad one. <laughs> okay. I, yeah, I will keep on talking to you. Yeah. Uh but you are on social media, you are at least on uh, Facebook and mm -hmm. Instagram, maybe. Yes, I am. Yes, right? I, am. <laughs> I try to remember. I don't know if you have other social media sites. So I'm not. Uh, I think I have Twitter, but I don't use it a lot. Um, but, you know, yeah, you, you might say that it's, uh, um, you know, you, you say you hate them, yet you, yet you use them. You know, this is a, a question you can, you were about to do, right? No, I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, what are you talking about now? <laughs> yeah, it's just that uh, it's normal to be on social media nowadays. If you are not on social media, people look at you like you are an alien. And but this is what I want to, this is I, what I would prefer. What, uh, this is what I would prefer. In fact, yeah. the... The reason why I'm on social media is yet not clear to me. Um, um, I think that still I have, you know, the strongest feeling for me is kind of promoting my music and my band. So I think that I'm still attached to a certain idea or ideal world where having social media is helping my bands. Yeah. And posting things about me and music is helping my band then i don't know how how that is um real or correct i don't know i don't have, have a clue actually but still i'm in that kind of 
uh, situation. But yet, I would, uh, yeah, one day I will get out of it, I'm sure. Yeah. I don't know how far is, it is, but uh, I don't think that um, I'm doing it for being uh, like, like other people looks at me as a normal guy because I have social media. I don't give a fuck about that. I don't. Yeah. I don't even. I don't. I, I even hate the idea. You know. I I would prefer that people would look at me as an alien, and that would be more comfortable for me. To tell you the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Social media is. I don't know. For me, it's a way to stay in contact more with people in Italy because of course I live mm -hmm. in Finland so at least uh, people know that I'm still alive. Sure, sure, <laughs> that, I remember in the past I was like uh, you know uh, when I was in Italy and at the beginning when I moved to Finland I was quite a lot on Facebook. I was mm -hmm. sharing a lot of shit. Yeah. Whatever more or less was music or or just of writing what I was doing that it doesn't make sense because no one care. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I remember when I started to uh, be less active, people start to write me, is everything okay? Yeah, I'm still alive, just I don't want to be all the time. And sure. yeah. there is this, this weird thing about social media. Um, yeah. yeah, the promoting uh, about band or other things. It's great on social media because you can reach a lot of people. Sure, sure. But as a singular person, it's maybe not the best, even for the mental health. Sure, sure. It's not. It's. It's as, as I said. It turned people. Uh, it, 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 it kind of uh, like uh, it, it, it uh, how can I say that um, uh, there are different things of people that uh, just came out because of this you know like also psychological issues and problems and and, and you know things that we have in our in our minds because of this and that we wouldn't have if there wasn't any social media there are, there are many little things subtle subtle things mm -hmm. that are mining our mental health because of this so yeah yeah, yeah i agree yeah but and still, still i haven't found the worst game huh? but we have still a, a moment <laughs> but okay. I, I will keep on looking yeah, let's talk about uh, something better than social media and yeah. it's pizza. So, we are both Italian, we are both from the same region also. <laughs> but, what is your favorite pizza? Uh, well, first of all, pizza is my favorite food. Okay, uh, perfect. If I pick one, it's, it's going to be pizza, so I'm really interested in this question. Um, so if you asked me this uh, a couple of years ago, I would say pizza with um, prosciutto crudo and Parmesan cheese on top. You know, I've been eating that a lot. But, but since um, I am trying to become a vegetarian and I am basically am at the moment, uh, I just uh, removed the prosciutto crudo and I will go with uh, a margherita with parmesan and basil okay yeah. and some olive oil on top that would probably be my favorite pizza now yeah what about what? yours oh mine is a uh... ananas now that you are in no, no please no <laughs> but uh... We are talking about ananas in a, in a moment. My favorite when I'm in Italy, because in Finland it's not the same, it's difficult to find a yeah. really good pizza. Actually, I was last week in Helsinki for Tusca. And mm. before going to Tusca, we went to eat in different places. And one was an Italian pizzeria and I took oh. just margherita. But my, 
when when I go to Italy, my pizza is always margherita with olives and stracchino cheese. Okay. It's like okay. Uh, it's like a party in my mouth when I eat. That. Okay, okay. It's uh, I never never thought of that combination. It's yeah, good. and good. I'm like a olives freak. I, I just okay. Okay. they should all eat olives. Uh, mozzarella olives and yeah all the package and uh, i can say that it was not a great idea because in the middle of the night i woke up with some pain and so it was not a great idea but maybe i someday i will learn that not yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. where, where did you eat the the best pizza Ah, that's uh, a reason for great discussions all the time with my girlfriend, and uh, uh, you know, it's it's always difficult because you you know you think you you know when you find maybe a new pizzeria and then you you eat it, they say okay, this is the best pizza, and then you are convinced that you know that was the best pizza, but then some weeks pass, and then you say ah. Was it really the best pizza we've ever had? And uh, so, till now, we don't have uh, um, a nomination for a best pizza. We're still, you know, discussing. But there's a, a an amazing pizzeria here in uh, in the town where we live, um, Azzano Decimo, the town where we live, near Pordenone, and they make an an amazing pizza. So that that is great, and it's it's not because we live here, you know. It was just a pure coincidence, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And where did you eat the worst pizza? Mm -hmm. <laughs> around the, around the I, world. You know, I think now that I think of it, uh, I think it was in Brazil. Okay. It was a pizza that they brought us after a show. And uh, it, it was a mess, <laughs> complete mess. It was not a pizza. It was something else. <laughs> it was a disc of uh, bread with something on. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't remember. There, I, there was a lot of, of of onion, I think, and uh, I don't know. I don't remember the rest. It was yeah, not 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 good at all. <laughs> yeah, I will put everything away onion on the pizza for me is a big no or onion okay. if it's not cooked I, oh, okay I, yeah i don't know what's what's my problem but no, <laughs> it's, it's strong uh, yeah i know yeah if it's not cooked it's yeah it's gonna be hard <laughs> yeah on pizza especially mm. yeah um now i want your opinion of mm -hmm. of the you talk about ananas so yeah. i don't what is uh, correct in English is pineapple, pineapple or yeah, ananas. Right, pineapple, yeah. But we are talking about ananas because ananas is ananas. Yeah. <laughs> Does ananas belong to pizza? <laughs> well, um, I, I, you know, I'm not the typical Italian who, you know, makes a big deal if you mix things or, you know, if you eat a pizza that's not, you know, for example, ab abroad, you know, for example, in Germany or, you know, they you eat a pizza that is okay, okay it's not 100% the pizza you would eat in Italy, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really open to interpretations and really open to that. And uh, as long as, it, as it's good, I'm not, I, I don't make a big fuss. So... Let's start from this. <laughs> I'm not saying that uh, um, uh, pineapple ananas doesn't belong to pizza as long as you enjoy it. You know, Ninja Turtles made a pizza with, with chocolate, so I suppose everything is, you know, acceptable. Uh, I, I don't like pineapple on pizza. I don't like the idea of a fruit on a pizza at all. And I don't know why they chose pineapple. I don't know wh where that came from. Like, but you know, once in in Helsinki, I tried uh, um, 
of pineapple, uh, pizza with pineapple and, and ham, and it wasn't so bad. So, you know, if one enjoys it, why not? Yeah. I always say, it's fine if it's not, if it's not on my pizza. Exactly. <laughs> my pizza I, is I, pizza fruits. Yeah, I would never choose it if they, you know, I have a list and I would never choose that. But, yeah. yeah. I, I'm thinking, uh, no fruits, but is tomato considered a, a fruit? Because otherwise, it's the only fruit that goes. Oh, okay. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Yeah. Probably. Probably. Yeah. But the, I think that for me, the, the big shock about pizza was uh, when I came to Finland, I was au pair. And they were, okay, we are doing pizza now. You can come and put whatever you want here. And then I went down and they were putting on the pizza. Um, what's that in English? Carne macinata. Oh, minced meat. Yeah. yeah. And the uh, peach. Peach? Yeah, it's a thing. People eat peach on the pizza, and uh, apparently in uh, Sweden uh, they have uh, bananas on the pizza. Oh my god, <laughs> terrible! I don't know what, what problem those people have uh, with their taste because it's it's quite a lot, and it's not normal peach. It's uh, the one that you put in. In the fruit salad, so there is the side. Okay. okay. It's really sweet. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I wouldn't. No. <laughs> I couldn't. Yeah. But there's a lot of people that also put ketchup on pizza, which is. Uh, or ah, pasta. <laughs> on pasta, yeah, that's. Yeah, that. I, I am very open minded, but no, that. Not no. on food, not on my table. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's something that, uh, yeah, people ask me here in Finland, uh, what is my opinion, and yeah, yeah, <laughs> they are eating those things, so different culture, you know, <laughs> but they are learning, they are learning to eat better, oh, that's, that's the most important thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, well, at least, because, yeah. When you hear some things like you you said it's uh really <laughs> yeah but yeah we have done with this interview so thank you so much thank to, you to be uh my guest to this new yes. project and uh i hope that people enjoy this interview and uh maybe in the future we can do it again sure but first of all, I hope to see you here in Finland, that come to see a gig of yours and uh, take photos, signs uh, the photo day I, that I take back in the time where horrible, I had no professional <laughs> camera. Now it's a different story. Years, Years so, have passed, right? Yeah, but uh, yeah, I really hope to see you. If not hope in Finland, maybe somewhere else. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, but I I'm waiting to hear for the Hell in the Club album and oh, uh, also for the next uh, album from the trilogy. Uh, oh, thank you, thank you so much. Of course, yeah. good luck with your with your, your project. Thank, uh, you. thank you. Thank so, you. Thank you so much for this interview. And yeah, we will see each other in Finland for sure. Yeah, great. But uh, I hope you have a great summer. And thank you. You too. Thank you. And I hope that people are going to to watch the whole interview, to listen to your music. Uh, and uh, I want to know about you people. What do you think about uh, pineapple on pizza? Does it belong or not? Let, let us know in the comments. Okay, thank you. Cool.